Stand up right now. Okay, get there. I don't want anybody left out, okay? So believers, step out of your aisles. Come on, step out of your chairs. Go over and find some of their hand up. Keep your hand up if you... If, if that's you, and also those of you that are watching, we want to pray for you as well. Pastor Brent, I'm going to invite you to come. I'm going to ask you to pray, not only for those that are watching. Pastor Brent, I want to ask you to pray alongside with every person right now in the sound of my voice, that there will be no more migraines, no more headaches, no more de- Left of you and on the right of you. And when you stood up to prophesy, the craziest thing I ever saw was this massive angel with wings came and went like this around you. And then when you prophesied, he opened his wings up, and I went... I said, you have no idea. And, 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 and I just kind of kept it to myself. A few months later, maybe weeks later, a lady came frantically running up to me. Pastor Rank, Pastor Rank, can I talk to you? And she uh, was kind of white in the face. Looked like she had seen the Holy Ghost because her face was all white. She said, I'm not weird. I'm thinking, oh, man, if they have to qualify it, they probably are. Here it goes. <laughs> and then what was worse about it is they started crying. And I'm like, oh, no, not one of these criers because you don't know what's going to happen, Right? I said, yes. And she said, I'm not weird. I'm thinking, okay. She said, I, I'm from Florida and I was visiting, but I saw the most. She said, you prophesied. You were prophesying over America. I got to tell you what I saw. There's this huge angel on your left and this huge angel on your right. And this massive angel comes behind you and protects you with these wings. And when the word of the Lord comes, it thrusts the words and it carries it out. And I said, well, you're not crazy. That's the third one. Well, out the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. But I, I, I say that because... God, one day when I was standing up here, I felt the presence of that angel. And I was standing up here, and I heard the Lord say, stand over there. Uh, Where's there? I mean, what would you think? I'm like, I don't know where there is. So I'm like, okay, where's there? So I kind of winged it. No pun intended, angel, you know, wing. So I kind of winged it. I thought, okay, well, I'm just going to kind of pick a place. And I stood over here, and I picked a place. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of the Lord came on me. And God began to prophesy to Israel. And every time the Lord prophesies over Israel, he he has me stand over here. And and he prophesied many times about Netanyahu. He prophesied many times about Israel. No, you're not going to try something. Nay, it will not work against Netanyahu. Now, watch this. I want to pull up some prophecies that happened. These are documented. They were prophesied here in this church. Um, To show you, because here's why. This is why you got to come on Wednesday. God brought them out to bring them in. To give them the land. One of the prophecies that the Lord spoke, we won't show it today, but we're going to look at it on Wednesday. The Lord, when I stood over there, and the Lord was prophesying about Israel, he said there are two anointings, which is the presence of God or God's spirit on human flesh, doing what human flesh can't do. He said there are two in the earth that I have anointed. And I'm thinking, okay, my head's going, and who are they, Lord? And, you know, because, you know, when you, how many of you prophesied something? It comes out of, you know, from God. But your head will play with you. And so I'm thinking, who are they? And he said, I speak of Netanyahu and I speak of President Donald Trump. Now, you got to understand. But then he begins to prophesy and he talks about what's going to happen to Netanyahu. What's going to happen to President Trump? And here's the part I want you and why you got to come Wednesday. He mentions about their seat of authority and their power and how he's going to use them in the earth. And he mentions that Netanyahu would be the first one. Netanyahu, it all it looks pretty close. I mean, it, it's all but done. Nay, it's not going to work against him to try to take him out. And so that means if the first part of the prophecy happened, in that order, something else got to happen. Now watch this. Let's go to the prophecy. So I want you to see this because this is very important as we come into midterms. It's, it might be midterms for the United States politically, But for the earth, it's the setting up of 5783 or 5783, the Jewish calendar, or 2023, the uh, Gregorian calendar. God's bringing a freedom and he's restoring. But you cannot put all your eggs in one day. You cannot look at one day or you're going to miss. This is why what happened with Netanyahu is very, very God's midterms, God's mid turning. Where things are going to start shifting and moving towards rightness, justice, which is the foundation of God's throne, and a harsh judgment against people that have been doing these things. By the way, the Lord told me there's somebody that comes to our church that actually takes little notes and then submits it to different news outlets. And they write about us in a bad way. Well, that's how you get out of favor with God. 
But all that stuff, nonsense, is going to stop. But let's put up the prophecies. This one was from December 31st, 2019. Netanyahu. Netanyahu. Who? Who? Who are you? Netanyahu. Now, God knows, but he's wanting us to understand that this is very important. Because people think that he wasn't important. But to God's prophetic calendar, it is. The Spirit of God says, you are my prophet, you are my bulwark. And though they stand to accuse, to remove you, to lie and to speak words, to frustrate the purpose, I am not done with you. Now watch this next phrase. For the borders must and will be expanded for the what? State of Israel. Therefore I'm not finished. What is about to arise, Israel, shall be what? That's what they're saying. But it will not be what you think. And I've allowed this to happen that men may know that I am the God who stands in the midst of my people and my agenda shall go forth and I will not be stopped. Put up the next one. So then God prophesied, that was December 31st, 2019. Now this is April 19th, 2020. Israel, do you really think that I do not have your government figured out? They thought they could figure it out five times. There were too many lies, too much of a hidden agenda, To confuse your government to stop the voice of a prophet who speaks. For I'm not done with you, Netanyahu, for you shall rule in the coming days in a unique way, a different way of my choosing. Watch how I watch this word. Reset. Come on. A month earlier, March 15th, God said divine reset, divine reversal. And I will establish a what? Oh, God's new order, not theirs. Okay, let's go to the next one. June 6, 2021. Therefore, as I've declared, says the Spirit of God, I'm fighting these battles. This is my fight. Watch what I do to what? The earth. Whose way? So, do you see how important what just took place in Israel is? To the harsh season and all the garbage you've gone through and we've gone through. Watch what I do even to challenge what they're doing in the leadership of Israel. Look at the next one. This one was this year. Yet I say to you, who are you, Netanyahu? I've said into the earth, and I say it again, who are you? In fact, right before this, Anthony will tell you their government collapsed, right before this, this prophecy. Or actually, after this prophecy. This prophecy was spoken first, and then it collapsed. Yet I say to you, Netanyahu, I've said in the earth, and I say it again, who are you? I stand upon you, Israel. Who is Netanyahu? You've tried to frame him. You've tried to eliminate him. But I'm not done with him, says the living God, and I'm not done with Israel. Now, this service, when God spoke this, that's when that gavel came down, and it was a very fearful, holy moment. And I will shake your government, and I will do what you thought would not happen. And then literally, Anthony could tell you, he'll tell you on Wednesday, uh, a few weeks later, uh, their whole government just collapsed. Because God does nothing in the earth, Amos 3, 7, if you know your Bible, without revealing it to his servants who speak prophetically for him. So why is this important? Anthony, wasn't it just a few weeks later that it collapsed? Oh, okay, after 221, that's what he said, then it collapsed. All right, now watch this, because I want you to see Exodus 14. Now, let's look at a narrative in the remaining short time we have here. So, if God is speaking this about Netanyahu, and we're seeing what looks like it's coming to pass, I want you to understand that we are in the middle of an amazing, exciting time. You may call it mid-terms, basing it off of the terms of whatever the... My turn. And I'm going to mid-turn it. I'm going to shift things around and turn it. Pastor, is that possible? Absolutely. Look at Exodus 14. And the angel of the Lord, God, who had been going in front of the camp of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved in front and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of Egypt and the camp of Israel. It was a cloud along with darkness, even by day to the Egyptians. So what, what are evildoers about to see? Darkness. But it gave light by night to the people of God. In other words, things are going to get brighter. So one army did not come near the other all night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord swept the sea back by a strong, what kind of wind? East. East always speaks of judgment. That's why your sins are cast from the east. East means you're guilty of your sins to the west. What's Jesus? He's coming from what? Sky. The eastern sky. What's he going to do? Wage war and bring judgment. Right? When the priest would come in, carrying the sins of the people, he would go in through the east door, heading west. It was the west wind that God came and brought the whole waves that took out the Egyptians and liberated a nation. Because west is always symbolic of mercy or restoration. So 
Judgment comes first, and then what does God do? He shows his mercy by bringing restoration. That's what the next win that you'd read about in the narrative of the Red Sea. Okay, What are we seeing in this narrative? You're going to see judgment. You will see judgment on the evildoers. You will see God's mercy to save a nation. And you will see, just like the waters, you will see restoration. But notice the east wind turned the seabed into dry land, and the waters were divided. So there's a division coming. The waters were divided. Notice the Israelites went into what? The mid of the sea, the middle of the sea, the middle point, just like in our, in our nation, we're at the midterm. Notice what they were on. They were on dry land. Why is dry land important? Well, that literally happened, that historically happened, but the prophetic narrative is God is wanting to know, let you know that church, people who have endured hardship, God is saying you're going to get your footing back. You're going to get your gas prices back. You're going to get your, your, your normal prices of food back. You're going to get your country back. Things are going to start stabilizing. That's what dry ground. Come on, if you're walking in the middle of a lake or a sea, what kind of footing would you have? Unless God orchestrated it. So the Lord's telling you, I'm giving you a sure foundation again. I'm giving you solid footing. I'm trying to give back to you an understanding. You're going to get your feet back. You're going to get your footing back. There's certain restorational things. Remember what God prophesied. He said there's a put it back movement. What does Netanyahu represent? Part of the put it back movement. Amen? And so a wall began to form on the right and on the left, right in the middle. What are we getting ready to have on the right and on the left? Right in the middle of the red, uh, red, not just through this vessel, but there's many other vessels. That's why I can't speak for what other prophets are hearing. I can't speak for what other people are feeling. You know, I can only tell you what I feel. But I, I'm telling you, the same outcome is what the Lord is emphasizing. And here is what happened. The word of the Lord came to him in the middle, just like the word of the Lord is coming at the midterms. Watch what happens. Verse 5. The prophet in the middle of the court or the middle of the term speaks what God says. He tells Hezekiah, the king, he says, listen to what God is saying right now at the midterm or the middle court. God is saying, I've heard your prayers, America. I've heard your prayers, church. I've seen you gather for times of repentance. You know, Dutch Sheets was telling me, there's been more prayer movements like we've not seen. This isn't about judgment. Okay, it's about the thief had to be found, according to Proverbs 6. And if the thief be found, according to Proverbs 6, watch this. There must be, I'll put it back. He must be pay back. God is checking things off his list so that he can render a verdict like Anthony is going to show us on Wednesday so that God could render a verdict and say as the righteous judge I'm avenging, avenging speedily this nation and my people from their enemy. But he's got to check off all the lists. And so here's what God tells this man. It says Hezekiah, daylight savings. So he tells him go set the clock back 10 spaces. Ten is the number of redemption. It's the number of recompense. So what, did, what actually happened? The prophet hears in the middle of the court or the mid time and says, all right, God says, I've heard your prayers. I'm going to heal you and I'm going to heal the country, the nation, the kingdom. And as a result, there's a divine reset coming. There's a divine reversal coming. And guess what? That's exactly what happened. But notice it happened when the word of the Lord came in the middle. In Judges 16, verse 29, and we're going to go to 1 Kings 18 and close the shop up here. But in Judges 16, verse 29, uh, notice Samson. When did, he, did this happen? Samson took a hold of the two middle pillars. So Samson is right there in the middle. Where are we at in the midterm of things? We're right in the middle now. Okay? We're between what happened in 2020 and what will take place 2024. We're right in the middle and notice what he did. He put his hand upon the right, upon the left. We're getting ready to see the right and see the left. Right? And he put his hands on him. And what did he do? He pulled the house down. Now, here's what I believe. I believe in all my heart. God has my attention. You know, again, people prophesy in red wave. Even if there's a red wave, how is that going to, what's going to be the outcome? Okay? We, we just saw a huge landslide in 2020. The evidence shows it. The key is you cannot look at just one particular event or you cannot get so upset at things. Quit murmuring. Quit getting upset and in fear. Because in 2 Chronicles 20, 20, God said through the prophet, believe the Lord and you will be established. Believe his prophets and you will prosper. You'll come out of this. And so guess what they said? They would not say anything out of their mouth except singing to the Lord and saying, the Lord is good 
and his mercy endures forever. And watch what happens when they spoke out of their mouth. They didn't say anything else. God, you're good. Come on, no matter what you see on Tuesday, your mouth needs to be japping or whatever you call it. What do you call it? Zapping. What's the word? I don't know what the word is. Yapping, talking, smacking. You need to speak out of your mouth. The Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. No matter how big the victory is or whether, whether there isn't a big victory, whether it looks like we're having a repeat, you need to say out of your mouth because when they did that in 2 Chronicles 20, 20, the Bible says that the enemy turned on themselves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and God brought a great victory to the people and delivered them. How many hear that? The Lord did say, we're going to visit this on Wednesday. He did talk about the, you can go out and look at the prophecies uh, at OVTV. They're out there uh, underneath uh, the archives of last uh, Sunday service, the 9 o'clock service and the 1130 service. There was a prophecy that came in both about the midterms. And God said there's going to be disputes. He said there'll be some things disputed, some things undisputed, and some things refuted. He said there'll be steals. There'll be delays. And then he said there's going to be great victories. But he said, don't put your emphasis on a day. I'm doing more than that. Are you listening? Now, let's go to 1 Kings 18 as we close this thing up. In 1 Kings 18, the prophetic narrative now is a country or you could say a kingdom that was divided. You had Jezebel and Ahab that ruled uh, the kingdom to the north. Uh, and then there was the, uh, the kingdom to the south. And it was divided, 12 tribes of Israel, 10 to the north, 2 to the south. And so Israel was divided, but more than that, it was really divided like we're seeing today. I've never seen a time, uh, you know, you look at even where our Senate uh, sits right now. And, and people say, well, Pastor Hank, what are you feeling? Listen, as I've prayed and as the Lord spoke to me, he's been talking to me about things that are coming afterwards. He hasn't spoke so much about that day. He keeps talking to me about other things that I'm seeing, I'm listening, I'm watching, I'm waiting until I can release certain things. But one thing that he has had me constantly over is the Senate. And if they try to pull any kind of baloney, they're more, they're more, uh, they're more going to try with the Senate because it's not as, they don't have as many seats. And it's more important to them than it is the House, even though the House is important. So you need to pray over both. But here's the thing. In verse 21, the prophetic narrative, this literally happened. Elijah was dealing with a divided country, a divided kingdom. And he said, how long shall you be caught between two opinions? How long are you going to, uh, you know, stand with God, stand with country, be falsely accused of being a Christian nationalist or a Christian rationalist? Or are you going to go woke? How long are you going to be caught between two opinions? That's where America's been at. It's been so divided. He said, if God be God, you follow him. But if Baal, which is what we're fighting, we're fighting against, you know, people that are cooperating with very, very ancient evil entities called demonic spirits and principalities and powers. And it's part of the Baal uh, demonic kingdom. Okay. He said, follow after him. The people did not answer him a word. Now watch what happens. I want you to look at verse 25. And this is important. So it came to pass that Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, choose you one bullock for yourself and you dress it first. For you are many. Come on, there's a lot of people that have been dressing up the narratives of nothing happened in 2020 that you should even pay attention to. They spent a lot of money working with high tech, big tech, right? Yep. Working with social media to dress it up to make it look like that a guy who could only gather nobody because he's <laughs> hid in his basement when he did come out had five or ten people trying to make it look like they've been dressing a voice, and you will be under tyranny. You have to understand how this is important. And so they dressed it up. Look at verse 26. They dressed it up. Man, they've been dressing it up. They've been dressing it up so much where they put uh, dudes, put wigs on uh, that are, you know, men, and they want to tell you to call them a woman. They've been dressing this whole thing up a long time. And I'm telling you, this moral man is, is tired of it. They've been dressing it up, thinking it's okay to put sexual material and exploitation in our schools. They've been dressing it up a long time in them, and they dressed it. And called on the name of Baal from morning until noon. Now, here's what's amazing. This was the party of no religious affiliation except Baal. Their affiliation was not the true God. Don't you dare think the Democratic Party, which is out on their party platform that you can go to, that tells you they've pushed the name of God out. 
They don't want Christianity. They don't want Jesus Christ. They don't want any form of godliness. Why? So they can continue with their evil. Don't think that they're going to win. Because you cannot win without God. And notice what happened. Notice morning until noon. Now, actually, it was morning until midday. There was a midday or a mid-turn term. It's midday. So notice, since 2020 and before, you can say that's the morning. We've all been in mourning because of what they've done. <laughs> up until the midday. Up until the midterm. They're dressing it up. They got their agenda. They're pushing the true God out. They have 400 prophets of Baal called CNN and all the other, uh, and MSNBC and all the other fake news and all the other news outlets that are prophesying false stuff that also point their finger. When's the first time that these secular magazines and newspaper could care a lick about prophets or preachers? They never paid any attention to us before. But because we're carrying the voice of truth, and we're speaking for God, and they're lying, they want to convince you otherwise. If we weren't telling the truth, then why would you pay, spend time writing about us? Why would you have to have somebody in my church send articles to you on what I say? An informant in the church. Yeah, God told me on you, and he's going to... You're not, you're, not, you're not blessed if you do that stuff. Thanks for the advertisement, though. So anyway, um, they weren't blessed. There was no voice. They, they did this until way decades prior, dressing things up, making it look a certain way. But, oh, no, people still hold on. Well, you know, my grandma, my mom, with them. You went along with big government. Yeah, morning until a midday, a midterm, but there was no voice. God didn't answer. No one answered. God didn't answer. There was nothing. And they leaped. And others, boy, they've been jumping and leaping, even stumbling, even on airplanes. <laughs> Verse 27. And it came to pass at, I wish they could put up the actual uh, one in the New Living. Watch this. And Elijah began mocking them. You'll have to shout louder, he scoffed. What's the matter? Is, is your God, perhaps he's daydreaming, relieving himself, or maybe he's awake on a trip, or he's asleep and he's to be awakened. Yeah, he's out going to the bathroom. And notice it was at the time of the midday. That's what I want you to see. It was at the time of the midday. So all this leading up to the midterm, the midday, all this was going on. And they shouted louder. And they shouted the formal custom. They cut themselves. Come on. You know, in other words, they're self-inflicting their wound. People don't realize. They think that, you know, the high gas prices, the inflation, you, women who are pregnant uh, or, or that had babies couldn't get formula. And the list goes on and on and on. You say you're for black people, but yet, you know, when, when with BLM and then all of a sudden when the businesses are burning down and the black people are standing there crying, bawling, losing everything, where was BLM, Black Lives Matter? It didn't matter. And it hurt my heart. And it's not right. And it wasn't acceptable. And what made me even more angry is I think that there is, there is a message and there is a listening that we must give to the black people of our country. Yeah. And you shouldn't have an organization like that as your representative. So they shouted. They cut themselves. They had self-inflicted wounds, man. This is what I'm saying. This is all going to end. They cut themselves with knives, swords, until their own blush, blood gushed out. They're, they're not going to win. Look at verse 29. You're not going to like this verse. I'm almost done. Pastor Doug, come quickly, because they're not going to like, I don't think you're going to like this verse. I don't think you really will. I don't, but it is not. It's not fake. It's true. I think, listen, you're going to love it. I really think you're going to love it. I think you're going to really enjoy it. I think you're going to think it's terrific. I think, it, listen, I'll be back. Don't worry. I'm coming back. Netanyahu, we're back. We're coming back. We're coming back. Yes, we are. We're coming back. I think it's going to be huge. Listen, it's going to be terrific. I think you just, you know, we're getting our country back. Yes, we are. We're going to get it back. And it's going to be in God we trust. Amen. All right, now watch. So, 
Some dun, 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 dun music just for Kenya, like dun, 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 dun. I can sense they're writing about me now, and I just want a little drama with it, you know. I'm just gonna add to it because they always take the pictures of you doing something, and I won't do it because they'll snapshot it and put it out there. But they always get these pictures where you're the angriest looking, you know, and you look like you know. Okay, so let's wrap this up. All right, now, they already wrote about that. They said I was molesting the flag. Because that's what, that's what perverted people think. So you just wrote about who you are. Anyway, so it came to pass when midday was what? You mean the midterms were over, Pastor? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Morning, midday, dressing it up, leaping, playing the part, self-inflicted wounds, the prophets of Baal looking like they're the predominant voice. And now the midterms are over, and they kept prophesying. We won. They're the governor of Pennsylvania. They're the governor of Nevada, Arizona. But then something happened. It looked like it was going to go a different way all the way up to the midday, on the midday, but then a little bit of time passed. Take note of that. A little bit of time passed. A little bit of time passed the midday, the midterm, and it looked like nothing was happening. There was neither voice, no answer, no regard, until the time of the evening what? Sacrifice. Why is evening sacrifice so important? Come on. Look at verse 36. And it came to pass at the time of the evening sacrifice. That was three hours later. But it wasn't about the midday. It wasn't about their time. God's calendar, because he was showing a prophetic foreshadowing of something that the Messiah would have happen. At the offering, I'm almost done, by the way. The evening sacrifice, all heaven broke loose just after the midday, midterm. God shows up at the time of the evening sacrifice, 3 p.m. All fire came down and absolutely took out all of the false, all of the evil, all of the prior season that led up to the midday and after. And notice what he did. Came to pass at the time, the evening sacrifice, he called on the God of covenant. Come on, God has not forgotten the covenants over this nation. Notice verse 31. For, or verse 30. First thing that uh, Elijah does, and this is why we're going to see at the evening sacrifice. We're going to see after our midday, our midterm. Come on, don't put your whole focus on Tuesday. God is moving. And I already shared with you ahead of time many examples and we're going to share it on Wednesday of how we're winning. Elijah said unto the people, come near to me. All the people came near, and he repaired the altar. Come on, that's prayer. God, the reason he answered at the evening sacrifice, because he honored the prayers of the people. Verse 31, he put 12 stones in order. He did a prophetic act. And notice what he called those stones. He said, all right, Israel, you might be divided in the natural. It might be divided. But guess what? There is coming a moment where we are not letting you be called the divided states of America. You are the United States of America. He called it Israel. I say you are the United States. God begins to put the nation back together. Now watch. We're going to make it very quick. Stand your feet. Um, look at verse 39. Look at what God does in verse 39. And when all the people saw that God answered at the evening sacrifice, they fell on their faces. And they said, the Lord is God. Who wants the attention? God. He is the God. Look at verse 40. The fake news was cut off. 
Take the prophets of Baal. Come on, that was the fake and false news. That was the people that were prophesying falsely and wrong. Let not one of them escape. They didn't escape. Look at verse 41. All of a sudden, after, watch this, all the stuff leading up to the midterm. And then after the midterm, the evening sacrifice, watch what comes after a plague, after a shut-in. Come on. After all of this delay, come on, dressing it up, shouting, self-inflicted. Ahab says, wait a minute, something is shifting in the atmosphere something is different there is something i hear a sound it's not the sound of treason it's not the sound of thievery and arguing and fighting and bickering there's a sound of rain why is rain important because rain speaks of god hosea 6 3 i will come as the rain rain speaks of an outpouring come on we are in the middle of the greatest outpouring of god and his presence in fact look here two more scriptures Verse 45, look what the Bible says. The Bible calls it something even amazing. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds. See, we think, oh, when it's black and it's dark, oh, we're finished. No, that's when God moves. The heavens were black, and there was a what kind of rain? A great rain. Now look at the last one, verse 46. I want you to put your eyes on this. So it looks like all this time, all the things that we've been praying Standing for prophesying. Seems like it's never going to happen. Oh, from the morning, however many years it's been, decades it's been. Coming a moment of the evening sacrifice. What's evening sacrifice? When Jesus, at 3 p.m., at the time of the evening sacrifice, they thought they had the Son of God. And he looked up. He said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. It is finished. And after he did that, the veil of the temple rents from the top to the bottom. And God kicked the devil's butt so bad that the devil still has wart, wart, uh, welts on his behind. They're not going to get away with it just like the devil did. not Just like the prophets of Baal did. not And watch this. The hand of the Lord was upon the prophetic ministry. Elijah. And he girded up his loins and notice he ran ahead of all of the political nonsense, control, all the evil that was happening. And he was out in front of it. In other words, all the things that the prophets have been prophesying, declaring, standing for is going to outrun the political landscape that you've been seeing. And it's going to come to pass. Amen. Pastor Doug, take it away. Thank you. I'll see you on Monday night tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. You know what to do, folks. Amen. He, uh, his material is out at the, uh, uh, the information counter. If you want to say something about that too, Pastor Doug, go ahead. It is a speed limit enforcement of 100 kilometers ahead of about 400 meters.
it is a speed limit enforcement of 100 kilometers ahead of about 200 meters. It has been processed normally.